Stolen money, hidden cameras in a women's locker room, even rape allegations, all against members of the West Virginia State Police. Our WSAZ investigation all started when two anonymous letters surfaced. Tonight, the information that was provided to write one of the letters is not so anonymous anymore. News Channel 3's Curtis Johnson introduces us to Joseph Comer, a trooper claiming to bleed the whistleblower. Anonymous allegations claiming serious wrongdoing against members of the West Virginia State Police. The allegations made in two anonymous letters sent to state officials. The first detailing claims of a ghost account used for purchases, falsified overtime, and a hidden camera system placed in the women's locker room at the State Police Training Academy. And now, WSAZ has confirmed that whistleblower who provided the information in that first letter is this man, Joseph Comer, a corporal with the West Virginia State Police. When I spoke with Comer Wednesday, he stopped short of saying he wrote the letter. Are you the author of that letter? I provided information for, for the letters. Did someone else write the letter on your behalf? I just leave it that, again, I, I had the information and, and I provided the information. Comer says his reason for giving the information in the letter was misconduct that he claims was getting worse. It goes against everything I believe as a trooper and, and the way then in which I was raised. Um, and, and beyond belief, it goes against our oath of office. Um, yeah, our baseline is, is case law, state law, federal law, uh, policy, 81 CSRs, which is our administrative rules. Um, we're not above that. Uh, we, we're not better than anybody, but we, we are held to a higher standard and we should hold ourselves to a higher standard. The head of the state police, Jan Cahill, chose to resign after the letter surfaced. The governor then appointing the agency's new interim superintendent, Jack Chambers. Comer says he's watched from afar because about a week after the letter was made public in February, he was arrested on charges stemming from two alleged domestic violence incidents. Court documents state the crimes Comer is accused of committing both happened months earlier, in December. The documents detail two separate incidents. The first alleging Comer grabbed a woman around the neck during a child exchange. In the second incident, a week later, Comer is accused of hitting the woman in the head with a sippy cup during another exchange. Comer shares his youngest child with the alleged victim and WSAZ has confirmed she is also a member of the West Virginia State Police. Wednesday, I asked Comer about the allegations. Did you hit the victim with a sippy cup? No. Did you strangle the victim? No. At any time, did you place your hands around her neck? No. If you didn't do those things, how would the state police then bring charges against you? And with all due respect, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to stay away from that part of it. Comer remains on administrative leave with pay. His attorney says he sent a letter last week to the new head of state police asking why those named in the letter are still on the job, a concern I asked the governor about Wednesday. How do you respond to that? Is there an active investigation or active review of Comer's arrest, considering he says it's retaliatory? And has anyone else been placed on leave as a result of his letter? The bottom line of the whole thing is, of course, we want to be right. We don't, we don't want to be fast. We want to be right. And, uh, and, and you know, from the standpoint, uh, you know, of, of, of debating something back and forth with the, the Comer individual in the media and everything, I'm not going to do that. I mean, that's just silly. And I am absolutely confident that Jack Chambers and his people will get to the bottom of it. And if they don't, we'll blow another bubble. But we'll get to the bottom of it. Comer says he supports Colonel Chambers and the governor, but hopes action comes sooner than later. We elected the man to do a job, and, and he's got a job to do, whether we agree or disagree with it or not. So, you know, I, I, I support Governor Justice as far as, you know, where he's at and what he's looking at and what he sees. Um, as far as where I'm sitting at, um, this isn't about... Uh, this isn't about personal feelings or, or ill intent. Um, this is about, again, right and wrong and everything that I, that I have been trying to stand for. Curtis Johnson, WSAZ News Channel 3, Charleston. Comer faces charges of felony strangulation and misdemeanor domestic battery. A judge found probable cause on the strangulation charge and sent the case to a grand jury.